Good. Okay, so before we start, let us all sit down already. We will be leading our sing inspiration today, this afternoon. So before we have our sing inspiration, I invite everyone to please stand up as we whisper a short prayer. Let us all stand. Let's pray. Our dear, lo kind, loving Heavenly Father, we come unto you this afternoon thanking you for your goodness and love as we had our lessons and discussions earlier this day. Thank you for the knowledge that we have had. And as we receive another word that you have prepared for us this afternoon, help us, dear God, to focus and absorb the knowledge that we may live in it daily. Forgive us from our sins. This is all we ask. In the loving name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. For your first song, let us all sing, Jesus is my captain. Jesus is my captain, I shall not be moved. Jesus is my captain, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree, just planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved Just like a tree, just planted by the waters I shall not be moved Jesus is my captain, I shall not be moved Jesus is my captain, I shall not be moved Just like a tree, just planted by the waters I shall not be moved So for a second song, let's sing Behold What Mother of Love third song, let us all sing in the service of the King. I am happy in the service of the King. I am happy, oh so happy. I have peace and joy that nothing else can bring in the service of the King. In the service of the King, every talent I will bring, I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the King. I am happy in the service of the King, I am happy, oh so happy. Sunshine and the shadows I can sing in the service of the King. In the service of the King, 
Every talent I will bring. I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the King. Good afternoon, fellow students and teachers of AUPA Academy. Good afternoon. Welcome to our third day, the sixth session for the week of prayer with the theme, Back to the Basics. Have you been blessed and touched this morning? If you want, uh, if you want to say yes, please say amen. Amen. Um, I am happy to see that many Academy students even the teachers give their undivided attention to the speaker and as a facilitator. I am glad that you participate well in every group discussion. For this afternoon, we will hear a message from Johan Flores about stewardship. And I hope we'll all be able to understand God's message to us about this topic. Once again, good afternoon and welcome. For our opening song, let us all rise and let's sing our theme song. Theme song. Until we give you first place, until we let you begin. Fill us with your spirit, renew us from within. Nothing matters, nothing's gained without your holy presence. Our lives are lived in vain. Lord, we want to know you. Live our lives to show you all the love we owe you. We're seekers of. Your heart was broken because you saw the need, because you gave so freely, because of Calvary.
Let us all kneel as we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are the creator of everything, worthy of our praise. Now, O Lord, hear us as we pray. Truly, we are grateful because you have been good to us. Oh, how great is thy faithfulness. Even though we are a mere sinner, you trust us that great that you entrust us to continue your, your mission here in this world. Now, O oh Lord, we ask for your guidance this week of prayer. Grant us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us so we can continue to be touched by those messages. Guide our speakers that they may deliver your messages for us. Bless us and keep us away from any temptations that may hinder us from listening. May the lessons be in touch in our hearts that we can use it for your glory. Thank you for the assurance that you have answered our prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, AUPA. Welcome to the sixth session of our week of prayer. My topic for today is stewardship with the title of God's Faithful Managers. Um, if you guys have your Bibles with you, you can open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. So I hope you guys learned a couple of things from the past days. And what I want you to remember is that God loves you. God what? That's right. God loves you. I'm going to start off by telling you guys a story. It's about August H. Frank. August H. Frank was a preacher. He was a preacher who decided he wanted to start an orphanage. Now, I don't know what you guys think, but having kids is a very hard thing to do. Ask your parents. Just having one or two is very, very hard. What more starting an orphanage and having 20, 30, 50 kids to take care of? One day, there was a knock on his door. Good sir, he saw a woman in front of the door, and she was a Christian widow. The Christian widow said, Dear sir, can you spare a ducat or two? Can you spare a ducat and a gold coin? A ducat is worth $150. Can you spare that much money? Starting an orphanage is hard. And he didn't have money to give. But he knew the Lord wanted to give money to this young woman through him. And so he did. Even if he himself was running out of money, since he had an orphanage to run, he, out of his heart, still gave the woman a ducat and a gold coin. A day after that, the woman wrote him a letter. Sir, I thank you very much for your kind heart. I have asked the Lord to bless you. Thank you very much. That very same day, he received 12 ducats from a lady. 500 gold coins from the prince. God is good. Am I right? God is good. The Lord used him to give and bless, to give money to this young woman and bless her. Gusto sanang sabihin sa inyo, if you are faithful to God, God will bless you even more. There are many people who have done this throughout history. One is James Lewis Kraft, head of the Kraft Corporation. He, he said, if I had not given my tithe to the Lord, the Lord will not have given me this entire company to run. The Lord is truly a good person. You see, the Lord created an entire world. God created the air, the earth, the seas. God created everything and so He owns everything. He owns everything and He entrusted it. He entrusted the whole world to you, to me, to humankind. God 
didn't entrust it to ants. He didn't entrust it to birds. He did not give responsibility over all the earth to monkeys. He gave them to human beings. He gave them to human beings. Why? Why would God entrust an entire world, an entire world for goodness sakes, to man? I know from personal experience, man is not the most responsible person in this universe, but God entrusted it to man. Why? That's because I think the Lord knew the Lord knew that you and I were capable of taking care of this universe, of this world, and fulfilling His mission. I'd like to start off with a game. Do you guys like games? All right. So this game, uh, actually first, let me ask, Three volunteers, three volunteers to come up stage and help participate in this game. Anyone? I see Emerald Section. Uh, one over there in the back at the Ari. One more, one more. Come on, guys, one more volunteer. Marco, I think they're calling you. Marco from grade 9. Please welcome them off stage. Oh, I'm sorry. So I just gave them Money. I want us to start off with discussing the five D's in stewardship. The five D's in stewardship. And the very first thing that comes to my mind when I think of stewardship is money. And so to illustrate this, I've given each of these three 4,000 pesos. Kuya, what's your name? Josh. Jo Josh. His name's Josh. How are you, sir? Orvin de la Cruz. Orvin de la Cruz. And Ate? Hannah Cabisada. Okay. These three people are gonna put 4,000 pesos and divide it into these three boxes. The first box. The first box. The second box. And the third box. Give, save, spend. So I'm gonna ask them to go and put, distribute their 4,000 pesos into the boxes. Atari, can you go first? You guys are all done? All right. So, can you tell me, how do you distribute your money? Uh, I want to give the poor people just... Okay, um, tell me how much did you spend for each box and can you say it louder? Uh, the give, give box costs 2,000 pesos and the spend one costs 1,000 pesos. And uh, the save one is 1,000 pesos. So save 1,000 pesos, spend 1,000 pesos, 
and give 2,000 pesos, is that correct? Okay, uh, sir, why did you decide to distribute your money like that? Because if you save 1,000 pesos... Oh, can you s speak louder so that the people in the back can hear? Because I give the 2,000 pesos to the poor people so I can save up to 1,000 pesos and spend uh, 1,000 pesos. If you guys didn't hear, he gave 2,000 pesos to giving. 2,000 pesos to giving, right? Okay, um, I decided to put uh, 1,000 in spend because, of course, uh, I need to put the bare minimum amount to look after myself because I cannot serve others without taking care of myself first. Then I spent uh, 2K in save because I don't know when an emergency can occur, so might as well be prepared for it. And the last 1K, because I had no plan in mind for it, I decided to give it away because an asset that is not spent is an asset wasted. So might as well give it to someone else who can put it to good use. And, and Adiari? So I decided to put 1,000 each in save and spend box because I find it sufficient for me, for my needs and my wants. While I put 2,000 pesos for the give box because I consider it as um, an excessive blessing that needs to be shared to the people to those who are in need. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good. Um, I'm gonna give you each Chips Delight. Sponsored. Ah. When I think of stewardship, I think of money. That's the first thing that comes through my mind. And this shows us how an everyday person spends their money, uses their money. They either give it, they either save it, or they spend it. These are the three major ways they spend their money. I've mentioned before Christ. I mentioned before Christ gave us everything, right? He created the world. And you see, sometimes we may not use the money God has given us properly. I know I for myself. Spend it in useless things. As Christians, as sons and daughters of God, as stewards of God, we should know how to spend our money properly. And when it comes to stewardship, there are two things that will never leave the conversation. Number one, tithes. Number two, that's right, I heard it from the back, offerings. If you're like me, um, my dad was once explaining uh, why we give offerings and um, tithes. I asked my dad, Dad, why do we give offerings? Why do we give tithes? I mean, just think about it, yeah? One snap of a finger and God can make golden coins fall from the sky. Why does it need? Our tithes, why does it need our offerings? Friends, there's one thing I need to tell you. God does not need your tithes and offerings. God does not need your offerings, but He does need your dedication. God needs your dedication. And when you give your tithes, when you give your offerings, you are showing your dedication. As stewards of Christ, we should be good stewards of His treasure. That's the number one thing, that's the number one T 
I want to tell you guys, treasure. Second, time. I know this is a pretty touchy subject because every speaker, I'm pretty sure, has talked about how we spend our time. You've heard the sermon time and time again, but I want to remind you, spend your time wisely. We see in texts in the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, See then that you walked circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. One thing that God has given to us that is very, very important is time. God has given us all the same time, 24 hours. But the question is, how do we use our time? God wants us to spend eight hours sleeping, yeah. But Paul reminds us, see to it that your days are numbered. Make sure that you know how to spend your time wisely. God made you stewards. He gave you the time. He gave you the time to do everything you want. But make sure it is, line, it is in line with God's will. Time. The number two thing that I want to show you guys is talent. Okay, Lord, I want to spend my time doing your will for me. But how am I supposed to do that? I can't preach like the other people. I can't sing like the other people. How am I supposed to use my time for you? Even if I want to, how? The thing is, friends, God does not send His soldiers out into the battlefield without weapons, amen? God doesn't do that. He equips us. He equips us with talents. And I know for a fact that each and every one of you have talents. You guys know the story of the three servants. One servant was given 20 talents. The next 10 and the last five. The first two, the first two did what God expected them to. They used their talents wisely. They invested it. They made it grow. They made it become something that even they had not imagined it would become. But the third one, the third servant buried it deep inside the ground, didn't use it. We are not to be like that third man. God has given it to us talents, so let's use our talents. Let's make sure everybody, everybody we witness to is blessed. Because we use our talents. Remember, God is the creator, and we, we are his stewards. He wants you and me to use our talents to help him. That brings us to the Third, T, and the five things God has entrusted to us. The temple. 
honestly, um, I'm guilty of not taking ter- care of my temple. Because one of the most important things that Christ, that Christ has entrusted to us is our body. You see, our bodies are the temple of Christ. He knows we can take care of it, and that's why He gave it to us. We can't preach, we can't sing, we can't use our talents for Christ if we do not have a good body, if we do not take care of it, if we do not have enough sleep, good health, good diet, good exercise, if we do not have a healthy body, we can never be the most effective witnesses God wants us to be. God is the creator and we are stewards. That brings us to our last T. That is the truth. It's hot over here. The truth. You see, God created the world. And He made us stewards of it. But He made us stewards for a reason. You see, when Eden fell, when sin entered into the world, Christ knew we had a purpose. Christ knew there was this purpose that He gave us, and that is to save humanity. As long as there is anyone who desires to be saved, as long as there is a person who does not hear the truth, who did not hear the truth, as long as there is a person who is ignorant of the fact that God had saved them, We should be shouting at the rooftops, God is coming soon. God is coming soon and that is the truth that I want to tell you guys today. That God wants you to know. God is the creator and we are his stewards. We are stewards of his truth. We should be able to use that truth wisely and spread it across the globe. You, me, all the people in this room. We should be the best stewards, the most effective witnesses God wants us to be. He wants us to serve. It's often said that before you become a leader, you must serve. And that is, I think, what God wants us to do. He wants us to serve everybody in this world. Serve Him. Make sure we accomplish His mission. Make sure we do our best to be effective witnesses for Christ the King. You see, just like in the very beginning, August H. Frank, he helped the people around him. He was a good steward of the money that God had given him. God wants us to be the same. He wants us to be faithful stewards. To be his managers. If you forget everything that I said in the past, remember this. God created the world. And because He created the world, He owns everything. 
And even if he owns everything, he entrusted it to man. We are his stewards. And God gave us a mission. And so I hope that every one of us will be able to fulfill that mission. That is, to serve him and be effective witnesses for him. Thank you very much.